Our gospel this evening comes from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Grace and peace to you from God who created you, Jesus who loves you, and the Holy Spirit who lives in you. I am the bread of life. This is the first of seven I am statements that Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. These are seven declarations about himself. In all seven, Jesus combines the I am with a metaphor which expresses his saving relationship to humanity. While verse 35 is a good starting point for this passage, verse 25 is where the conversation begins with a group who sought out Jesus after his feeding of the 5,000. Following this miracle, Jesus fled to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, fearing that the crowd would try to anoint him king. This pattern of a miracle followed by teaching is common in the Gospel of John. Jesus uses the miracle, in this case the feeding of the 5,000, to teach about his identity and purpose. Taken in its context, Jesus' statement, I am the bread of life, comes after the passage of the feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus feeds the crowd himself. Only in John does Jesus distribute the bread and fish to the crowd instead of the disciples doing it. His statement, I am the bread of life, is grounded in an event where people are fed and satisfied. There is some left over that is gathered up by the disciples, so none is lost. Bread is considered a staple food, a basic dietary item. We may survive for a while on just bread and water. Bread is such a basic food that it has become synonymous with food for general, in general. Many of you may have heard or even used the phrase breaking bread together to indicate sharing a meal with someone else. Bread also plays a big part in the Jewish Passover meal. The Jews were to eat unleavened bread during the Passover feast and then for seven days following the feast as a celebration of the exodus from Egypt. Additionally, when the Jews were traveling through the wilderness for 40 years, God gave them bread from heaven, manna, to sustain them. Remember, Jesus is Jewish, and he knows all of these bread references from the Old Testament. So he's very well aware of what the Israelites will be thinking when they hear him say, I am the bread of life. And it's all part of what Jesus is teaching us in John 6. After Jesus has distributed the food to the 5,000 and the uh, disciples gather up what was left over, Jesus and his disciples cross over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The crowd follows him. And Jesus accuses them of coming after him just to get another free meal. The people he fed sought him out not because of the miracle they had witnessed, but to eat again and be filled. They missed out on the fact that Jesus was the promised Messiah. 
They even asked for a sign from Jesus that he had been sent from God. How much more of a sign did they want other than the feeding of the 5,000? And keep in mind that back in the first century, only the men present were included in the counted number. So it was 5,000 men. Now you can add on all the women and children too. It's got to be another couple thousand. All were fed from five barley loaves and two fish with leftovers. However, the crowd equated the feeding of the 5,000 with the gift of manna that had accompanied Moses' ministry, and they wanted a greater sign. Jesus corrected them, pointing out that the manna in the wilderness did not come from Moses, but from God. Switching to the present tense, Jesus continues speaking to them. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. When the people ask Jesus for the true bread of heaven that gives life, Jesus responds with, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Quite the statement. Jesus is equating himself with bread saying that he is essential for life. He isn't referring to physical life, though, but to eternal life. Jesus is also making a claim to deity. I am the bread of life is the first I am statement in John's gospel. The phrase I am is the covenant name of God that was revealed to Moses at the burning bush on Mount Sinai. The Jews who were listening to Jesus would have understood this as a claim to deity. With the words come and believe, Jesus is inviting the people listening to place their faith in him as the Messiah, the Son of God. Coming to Jesus means making a choice to forsake the world and follow him. Believing in Jesus means placing our faith in him that he is who he says he is, that he will do what he says he will do, and that he is the only one who can. With the words hunger and thirst, Jesus isn't talking about doing away with physical hunger and thirst. He is talking about satisfying our hunger and thirst to be made righteous in the sight of God. In the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew, Jesus tells them, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And here in tonight's passage, he's telling them how. To believe in him whom God has sent. When Christ died on the cross, he took our sins upon himself. When we place our faith in him, our sins become Christ's and his righteousness becomes ours. Jesus satisfies our hunger and thirst for righteousness. He is our bread of life. As the bread of life, Jesus has given us an opportunity to rethink our relationship with him our practice of celebrating the Lord's Supper, and Jesus' relationship with the world. There is more to see in this miracle than the fact that Jesus is able to provide for their hunger for righteousness. And it is that he, his righteousness, is enough. We can connect this passage to the manna from God God provided for his people as they traveled through the desert, and there was always enough. They were told to take only what they needed for one day. There would be more the next day, and there always was. Just as God provided manna for the Israelites in the wilderness, Jesus provides the bread we need for life. We can connect this passage to Lent, 
Lent is a season that includes disciplines such as fasting. Use the practice of simplicity, bread and soup, and there's always enough. Nothing will be lost. Jesus will lose nothing the Father has given him, but raise it up on the last day. What do we need to have life and have it abundantly? <laughs>